Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Britt Talley, Daniel, MD, and I'm a neurologist and a member of the American Academy of Neurology and headache doctor and a member of the American Headache Society. And I've written a big textbook on migraine, which is 400 pages with 900 references, and I have a smaller book on migraine called the Mini Neurology Series Volume 1 on migraine. And both of those are listed on Amazon under my name. And I also have a big blog on migraine um, on the internet, which is www.drmigraine.com. This is podcast number one. I'm going to be talking about migraine without aura. And to start it, I'm going to describe a typical doctor-patient relationship with a patient coming to see a doctor in his office. He's a headache doctor. So she, he gets her in the front of the office and brings her back and has, sits her down across from him and says, what brings you in today? And the patient says, my headaches. I used to get them once or twice a year, but now lately they're more often. Uh, lately been more frequent and intense. The doctor asks, do you have more than one kind of headache? No, just the same one that keeps coming time again, the woman answered. Would you please describe a typical headache, then the doctor asked. Take me through it from beginning to end. Well, sometimes I can tell it's going to come on when the pain starts. It's hard to describe, but I feel elated, or I have a lot of energy, or something like that. This occurred hours to half a day before the headache starts. Then usually they start right here behind my right eye. And the doctor watched her put her right index finger over her right eye. There, it feels like a white hopped poker or a needle, or sometimes it throbs or feels like someone is trying to push my eyeball out. Anything else? The doctor asked. Well, that's usually it, she said, but sometimes they start in the back of my neck. Then after an hour or so, the pain comes over my head on one side and locates behind my right eye like I just told you. Then is that headache just like the first one you told me about? Pretty much. They just start differently. How frequently do you get a headache, the doctor asked, well, on a monthly basis? She stated, well, usually three or four a week if it's a good, I'm sorry, three or four a month if it's a good month. Five sometimes they're bad. What's the duration of your headaches, the doctor asked. It used to be I'd take two extra drinks, et cetera, and lie down for an hour, and my headache would go away in three or four hours. Then when I got my first job, I worked as a teller at a bank, and my headaches returned then. They'd last all day long if they started in the morning, or half of the day if they came on at lunch. And sometimes it would still be there the second day, although usually diminished somewhat, but not always. I have a headache three or four times a month, especially before my period starts. Do you have a headache a few days before or after monthly flow starts? Well, usually the day before I start, and those are the worst ones, the patient said. The worst? The doctor said, yes. More severe, more nausea. I go to bed, the patient replied. How long have you had that many per month, the doctor asked. Too long for me, the patient said, shaking her head, running her hand through her hair. But to answer your question, I would say for about a year or so. I want them to stop. What's the duration of a typical headache, the doctor asked. Usually it's all day until I go to bed at least, and then sometimes the next day too. Would that be 24 hours or 36 hours, the doctor asked. I'd say 36 hours usually, although every now and then I have a real whopper that lasts three or four days, the patient replied. Are the headaches throbbing, the doctor asked. Yeah, real headbangers. I could hear my heart in my head. It throbs. It pulses. I just want to wrap something cold and tight around my head, the patient said. On a scale of 1 to 10 for grading headache pain intensity, where 10 is the worst, what would be a number that would fit your headaches, the doctor asked. Ha, 10 plus, the patient said. Do you have any associated symptoms with a headache, you know, like nausea or vomiting? Well, they make me sick, but I rarely vomit, she said. I want to shun the light, and sounds are amplified like crazy. My daughter crying when she was young would drive me crazy. I want it to be in a quiet, dark room. Some persons find that odors or movement make their headaches worse. Does that ring any bells, the doctor asked. We had to move rooms in a hotel once, and boy, was my husband mad because we waited. We asked for a smoke-free room, and the minute I walked in there, I could smell it. Dry, days-old cigarette smoke. You know what I mean. I got an immediate migraine. I had my husband call to change us to another room, which, thankfully, he did. What about movement, the doctor asked. Does that make your headaches worse? Some people find that exercise, it's exercising, climbing stairs, housework, even just being 
upright makes their headaches worse. Does any of that sound familiar to you? Yes, that's me in the bed for the rest of the day, the patient replied. So this describes your headaches then. You don't have any other type, the doctor asked. Pretty much, the patient responded. Do you get tension type headaches? You know, the kind where your temples hurt, your neck feels tight, headaches that come in response to stress, the doctor asked. Well, yeah, I thought everybody had that kind of thing. Do you carry tension in your neck and shoulders or back, the doctor asked. Yes, every day, but that's just normal. I can live with that, the patient replied. Do you ever medicate those milder headaches, the doctor asked. No, not usually. Well, that's not true. Sometimes I take an extra drink Tylenol for those, and it helps. What about the more severe headaches? What do you take for those, the doctor asked. Extra strength, Excedrin, two at the onset and two to four later at two-hour intervals, the patient replied. How well does the Excedrin work, the doctor asked. The patient shrugged and held her hands palm up. I wouldn't be here if I what I took worked. What other patient said, well, of course not, the doctor replied. Really, the best thing that works is just to go to bed. If I can get to sleep, I usually wake up in a few hours and a headache is gone, the patient said. Do you get sinus headaches, doctor? The doctor asked. Yes, sometimes they're located over below my eyes. They're not even very severe. I usually get rid of them with Tylenol sinus medication. With a sinus headache, do you have a nasal discharge, the doctor asked. Sometimes I have a clear sinus discharge, but most of the time it's just that my nose is stopped up and I can't breathe. My eyes water and it feels like pressure in my sinuses, the patient said. I have some quick yes or no type headache questions, the doctor said. Does anyone in your family have headache? My mother does, and her mother, and oh, my sister has sinus headaches too. What about motion sickness? Nausea with driving in the car or in a boat. I've had that all my life. My daughter does too, although I, as I get older, it doesn't seem to bother me so much. What about hungry headaches? I get those, the patient said. Do you get nighttime headaches that occur in the middle of the night and wake you up for no reason, the doctor asked? Well, yeah, sometimes I get a headache about four in the morning and then I go back to sleep. But when I get up the next morning, watch out. It'll be a doozy, the patient said. What about headaches that come if you get hot, like being in the sun or working out? I get those sometimes, the patient said. Do you get headaches when you get stressed or when you're free from stress, like on a weekend, vacation, or holiday, the doctor asked. I do, the patient replied. A lot of Sundays are ruined by my headaches, and I had a killer headache last Christmas. Do you get headaches from something cold on the roof of your palate, like an ice cream or brain freeze headaches, the doctor asked. Yes, do you get headaches from any foods or wines thing that you eat or drink, the doctor asked. Well, red wine will give me a headache within 30 minutes, she said. And cho chocolate does too, which is unfortunate because I love chocolate. You've already mentioned that your headaches come around your menstrual cycle. So did you ever take the birth control pill to have any effect on the headaches? I took the pill for six weeks and started getting very frequent headaches. And my gynecologist took me off of them and said I couldn't take them. So I stopped them and my headaches got better. Do you get headaches when the barometric pressure changes, like when the weather changes, the doctor asked. Yes, and I get them with mountain sickness when I go skiing in Colorado. When you get one of those headaches, what I, I'm now going to call migraine without R. Do you experience any trouble with vision like before the headaches start? Trouble with vision, the patient wondered. You know, like seeing spots or holes or half or things, or like a crystal-like object with jagged flashing edges that move, the doctor asked. No, I haven't had that, the patient replied. But I thought a headache with those symptoms were really what one called migraine. The most prevalent type of migraine is migraine without aura, which is much like the headaches you described, the doctor said. Well, that's about all I wanted to ask you, so come on in the next room. I'll do a neurology exam, and we'll get going here. So that's the end of that interview kind of thing with a doctor neurologist talking to a patient with headache. Now, doctors are taught patterns of illness. Over 90% of clinical diagnosis is the doctor's active act of listening to the patient's symptoms, asking the right questions, and then assimilating what has been learned into a diagnostic formulation. All of this applies to migraine. So, migraine can be diagnosed or is listed as having features according to the International Classification of Headache, was the BOSS document for migraine for the world as the following. It has A, five attacks, which are similar to have features of B and D, which I'll go into in just a second. Five attacks. The attacks last four to 72 hours. 
see at least two of the following symptoms occur with the headaches. They're one-sided, they're pulsing in quality, moderate to severe, usually over level five, and they inhibit daily, ac- inhibit daily activities, and they're aggravated by walking in stairs or getting up and moving around. D, at least one of the following symptoms, nausea and or vomiting or sensitive to light and sound. And then E, history of physical and neurologic exam are basically normal. I want to mention what are called migraine comorbidities. <coughs> Excuse me. Comorbidity means these two things go together, co with, um, like cooperate, the word cooperate. So there are certain medical problems which come with migraine, and those are said to be comorbidities of migraine. An example would be respiratory conditions such as allergic rhinitis and asthma, cardiovascular conditions like mitral valve prolapse, hypertension, angina, myocardial infarction, Raynaud syndrome, syndrome, stroke, hypertension, endocrinological features such as thyroid disease, GI or gastrointestinal problems, ulcer disease, colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, rheumatologic features like uh, fibromyalgia, neurologic conditions, epilepsy, tension type headache, and essential tremor. Psychiatric problems such as mood disorders like bipolar disorder, depression, generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, agoraphobia, chronic fatigue, and or obsessive compulsive disorder. So all of those can relate to migraine. And generally the doctors should try to get a handle on that and see if that comes with one patient. Next I want to talk about the temporal profile of headache. They really come on, there's what can be said there's a prodrome of a migraine, there's the attack of the migraine, and then there's a postdrome or the post part of the attack. So some patients get prodrome or premonitory symptoms that occur several hours to a day or so before the headache starts, and the patient then may have symptoms of fatigue, trouble concentrating, neck stiffness, sensitivity to sound or light, nausea, blurred vision, yawning, pallor, and elated feeling, Crude craving, food, I'm sorry, food cravings for sweet things to eat, feeling thirsty, drowsy, irritable, or feeling depressed. And the patient will know these symptoms. And they can't sometimes define what it is. Sometimes patients will just say, I don't have any specific symptom, but I just know I'm going to get a headache. And at that point, there's really no headache, headache pain. Then during an attack, they get the headache pain, which is usually one sided throbbing, and they may have nausea or vomiting upset stomach. Many patients report they feel better after they vomit. And inability to be physical or be up and sense the light and sound become prominent. So the patient goes to the room or they shut the door and they turn off all the lights. Many patients go to sleep and they wake up after sleep, they'll feel better. And then the next day after, the patients still have a low level headache. They're listless, anorexic. They're sensitive to light and sound and odors. They can't think well, although they'll go to work. They may have allodynia then. Allodynia is pain in the head um, from altered physiology in the brain. And so that touch is perceived as painful. So with allodynia, the migraine patient after the migraine will have pain from brushing their hair or putting on their glasses or lying on one side of their head. All right, next I want to talk about one-sided headache. So Galen was a Roman physician in the third symptom who described what was called Hemicrania was a Latin phrase that means half of head. Hemicrania, like the hemispheres. It's two halves of spheres stuck together make a globe. And by that he meant half of head headache. And for some reason, as time went on, they dropped off the H-E, so we were left with the word micrania. So hemicrania become, became micrania. And then they added a G in France about the 17th century, so we have migraine. So our word migraine comes from Galen's half of head. And so the number one feature of migraine usually is that it's one-sided headache. They may switch sides, although many patients will have a dominant side. Also, migraine can start in the neck, and then they come forward. The headaches may be throbbing. So migraine is an arterial problem where the arteries dilate in relationship to neuronal changes and to uh, chemicals that come out during a migraine. So the patient will say they're pounding, they feel like a hammer, Oh, the arteries are inflamed and dilating. The headaches usually with a migraine are level 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
As mentioned before, the headache's duration can last four to seven, two hours. They may come with menstruation. Uh, to have what are called menstrual headaches, the International Classification of Headaches says you have to have, um, out of two or three menstrual cycles, you have to have a headache that starts the day of bleeding or two days before or two days after. And there's also a new syndrome where some people have, women will have a migraine that comes at the end of their cycle. If they bleed five days, they'll have a migraine that starts at the fifth day, for instance. Migraine in pregnancy. Well, for many people, particularly women that have a menstrual headache, have an estrogen relation with their headache, and that's a genetic thing. There's a high estrogen level during pregnancy, so migraine does really well during that time. And then when they bear their child and the headache cycles come back, they'll start having menstrual headache again. Now, the brain of the patient with migraine is inflamed, so they have sensitive to light, movement, and sound, and also odors, as we've said before. So thank you very much for listening to this. This is Dr. Daniel signing off. Uh, I would like for you to um, go on the uh, Internet and read the articles I have or check out any one of my books. Again, if you go to drmigraine.com, I have access to all that. And God bless all you persons who have migraine gene and have migraine as a problem. I'll see you later. Thanks a lot for listening. Bye-bye.